Looks like we've got the green light, which means we can yell at ya. Get those nerds! Nerds! Yes, you've been waiting around. It's the nine o'clock hour in the morning, which means it's time for one thing, and that is Bid Nerds. Hello, everybody. My name is John Polnick. I'm the host of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day, on cars and bids, and bring a trailer. Michael Deeb could say that in his sleep. He hears it over and over again. Michael Deeb from San Francisco coming to you out there live. How you doing, Michael Deeb? What's going on this morning? Good morning, nerds. Yes, you know, and you can say nerds plural because there's always more than one. But today there's three. I'm excited. I've got I've got an old friend of mine from way back in the Seattle days, all the way up in the northwest. We have an expert. We're nerds, or maybe yeah. dorks, or just complete incompetent. <laughs> doofuses but today we have someone uh i don't know we're bringing in experts we're, we're trying to up our game we got someone that knows actually knows what they're talking about for a change uh from columbia valley luxury cars we've got nathan mers look at this guy do we have him up boom look we got his name and is. we got his picture there it is guys hello nathan how are you sir well i couldn't be any better i i love talking uh, cars and people think I only like talking Porsche, so I'm kind of excited. We're going to talk about things, a little bit of Porsche and a little bit of everything. So uh, uh, I remember you and I got to meet each other years ago at uh, 993 Fest. Yes. And I always appreciate a guy who rocked a lowered Fister 3 equipped with the Caro's <laughs> 993 cab. So, uh, wow. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes, yes. You know, yes. Nathan... I, I, 993, it. yeah, I still have that car, and uh, that's my, uh, I rock that thing. Uh, Nathan, you really started a lot for me. Uh, that 993 Fest was great because you put a lot of people together. Uh, a good friend of friend of ours, uh, you remember Jaeger, uh, Jaeger with the 993 Speedster. You remember Jaeger, uh, Nathan? I do. Yeah, so him and I, he was kind of my connection to Vegas uh, before we moved down here. He kind of dialed me into uh, the whole scene here, and that kind of uh, was a big deal for me personally. So uh, thanks, Nathan. I appreciate you putting us together because uh, you set off a lot of wheels a rolling. So again, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, that domino led all the way to me. And now, now you can't get rid of me, JP. I'm oh, like family. I man. never really go oh, away. Oh, man. Okay, so I blame yeah. Nathan then? Is that what I should yes, do? Yes, Is it, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> and Nathan, I just, Nathan, I don't know you. I just want to introduce myself and say hello from San Francisco. Uh, right around the time that JP had mentioned reconnecting with you and inviting you onto the show, um, I was watching the Haggerty panel on Porsches that have – uh, effectively gone up in value during the pandemic and you were a part of that. Uh, and so it took me about 24 hours after watching the panel discussion to realize the guy who had the best answers on the panel discussion was in fact the same guy that JP was talking about. So it's very nice to meet you. I really enjoyed a lot of your takes. Uh, I know Ramsey Potts personally, so it's always fun to listen to him. He, he's, you know, uh, very eloquent and verbose, um, but I really enjoyed your takes. Um, the other guy was kind of negative and the Haggerty guy is paid to be enthusiast because obviously he's vested in, uh, everybody buying collector cars. So anyways, <laughs> it was really nice to meet you and, uh, thanks for coming on the show, man. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I love doing those panel discussions and, uh, I'm not quite as put together as Ramsey Ramsey. Nobody is. Hat on his head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he'd have this amazing Southern hospitality. So totally. I'll, I'll try to be a little more sharp witted than uh, Ramsey, which is hard, <laughs> but, uh, we'll keep yeah. it rolling this morning. Absolutely. Ramsey peacocks all the time, man. He looks great. <laughs> Before we get to the car, so uh, so here's what we do on the show. Is if, if this is your first time joining us, uh, what we do is we pick the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids, bring a trailer, P-Car Market, now Rad for Sale, Hemmings Auction, and whoever yep. else's dog uh, decides to come up with an <laughs> automotive enthusiast auction sites. They're popping up yeah. everywhere. Uh, we pick those most interesting cars of the day, and we go ahead and we have a conversation about those cars, what we think is interesting about them, and then we get to the good part, and that's making our predictions as to what we think they will sell for when the hammer drops today on those cars now we also keep ourselves uh well we check ourselves man we don't uh, we don't just throw these numbers out there and forget about it and don't go back and uh and you know and talk about them again we actually go back uh and we talk about yesterday's cars so uh before we get to yesterday's cars predictions nathan i want to give you a real quick uh quick moment to talk about columbia valley uh cars tell us what your dealership is about you don't just sell you know hyundai's and, and normal people car you you've got the J cool stuff right jp have you checked this out it's all porsches man i know Nathan's our guy. i know Nathan that's why i brought him on guy. oh my god look at this inventory go ahead man 
Yeah. So uh, basically, you know, I've loved Porsches since I was a kid, but I, I love all sorts of cars. That's why today's going to be fun. We're going to talk about some things other than Porsche. But, oh, when I first started uh, 15 years ago, I did kind of a, a broad mix of what I call mainline, highline. So, you know, Porsche, Mercedes Benz, BMW, um, Audi, Volkswagen, that kind of stuff. Uh, frankly, because I, I thought I couldn't just do just Porsche. And then later on, I realized, you know, I can just do Porsche. And so I've been pretty much exclusively Porsche focused for about, oh, seven or eight years now. Um, in fact, I, I desperately need to change my brand, but I'm as busy <laughs> as a guy can be uh, working by himself. And so I've kind of been lazy. So people say, oh, your brand doesn't really fit you. I'm like, oh, I know it. I just need to get off my uh, duff and, uh, and change that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Porsche is kind of in my blood. I've had a 911 since I was 16 years old. It's wow. Kind of my thing. Wow. Very cool. And wow. um, so, you know, to be able to do what you're passionate about and actually make a living doing it is kind of the ultimate <laughs> blessing. And right. So, um, yeah. I do that. We. I do a lot of air cooled, but I do some late model Porsche as well. Um, I'm also a writer for Porsche Panorama magazine, so you'll find me in there. JP um, mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, I do some of their online content, which is mm -hmm. kind of fun. I speak for entities like Hagerty. I speak at a lot of the auctions during auction week when we don't have COVID. So uh, that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, so, yeah, basically, if it relates to Porsche, that's my bag. Nice. Excellent. Uh, right, right now you have a 94, 964, 3.6 turbo in Amazon green over cashmere interior with $15,000 in service. It looks like it's a teaser. There's not a full bucket of photos yet. Uh, can you just give me a minute on that car? Is that a, is that a nice one? Oh, it's a beautiful car. So, yeah. you know, all of us are about the same age. I'm going to guess. And yeah, yeah, for yeah. us, the ultimate lust worthy portion of that era yeah. is a three, six turbo, right? You know, a lot of people think, oh, the 993 Turbo is the last of the air-cooled turbo. That should be the pinnacle. And it's a great car, but there's something about a 3.6 Turbo. It's the last of the rear-wheel drive, right. huge mm -hmm. flares, single turbo, lots of lag, hairy, brutal, <laughs> and they only made just over 400 of them. So yeah. Bad boys for life, that. yo. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's kind of like the ultimate throwdown trump card. If you're going to show up at a Porsche event, Yep. For any guy who probably age starts between 35 and 55, this is the ultimate bam. Agree. That car. Yeah. yeah. Could you give us a hint as to what ballpark uh, this car is going to come in at? Is it over 200? Is it over 250? Uh, it's going to be over 250. It's probably yeah. going to be, well, let's call it starting with a three plus or minus a couple bucks either way. Gotcha. 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 Um, gotcha. Yeah. One that... thing you'll figure out about me is I have obsessive compulsive disorder. So, uh huh. You know, I sweat all the small stuff. So you'll notice in that photo, of course, you're it has doing the, the wheels. speed lines. Yep, yep. Um, and I'm having the wheels done because they need to have that perfect etching that says speed line. Speed line for Porsche. For Porsche. Yep. yep. And they had it, yeah. but it was starting to age a little bit yellowing. And I thought, I can't have that. Unacceptable. <laughs> nice. Now, Amazon Green, really quickly, Amazon Green is not paint a sample on this car. It's just a very unusual regular range color that was offered on the 3.6. Is that correct to say? You know, I'd like to say it's it's more rare than it is. Of course, in the Porsche world, we always like to think our car is the rarest of the rare. That's uh, right. Amazon was on the palette for any 964 starting in 92. Got it. Uh, and it's not particularly rare. It's actually, I would say, it's probably in the, maybe it's number five or six in terms of popularity on a 3.6. Yeah. Cool. Um, so Beautiful color. It's certainly a cool color. It's, it's actually more blue than green. But. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. All right, man. All right, JP, I'm done. No further questions. You're witness. Well, yeah, sorry. I didn't know we were going to be uh, nerding out about that car. I would have brought, uh, oh. brought it up a little sooner there. There it is yeah. for a hey. moment, uh, everybody. Oh, look at that thing. All Did right. Well, that photo? Is that up near you? Uh, that photo's on Vashon Island, actually. Yeah, we mm, took it out for a Vashon. drive, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Really kind of a, similar to uh, 993 Fest, JP. We had a couple of buddies that actually were on 993 Fest. We took 964s out for a, for a fun day. Yeah, I remember on the last 993 Fest that I went to, and that was probably like 13 or 14 or something, uh, We I remember when everything was done, we're hanging out at the hotel bar outside by the river, and uh, you brought up the idea of allowing 964s the follow, for the next year. And I was like, yes, yes, 964s for sure. And everybody at that table was like, oh, 964s. Oh, they're so horrible. And I was the one guy at the table going, um, 
I own a 993, but 964s are better. And I thought I was going to get shot. <laughs> I thought they were going to like tie a, tie a rock around my That's neck and funny. throw me in the river. That's really funny. But Nathan, you, you had the vision. Uh, how'd that go for the next year? You know, we did it the next year. We changed it to, uh, I think we called it 8998 Fest. And we included <laughs> 964s. And I'll be honest, that was a little bit of my own personal bias. I love 993s. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can I quite unequivocally say that. However, if I was in a situation I could only have one without Ooh. even a moment's hesitation, it would yeah. be 964. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I have more 964s in my garage than 993s. So that kind of speaks Ooh, to it. Man, um, man, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't have a big enough. I don't have enough parking space. I only have. I have a 993, and that is the. That is. The, I've owned that 993 longer than any car I've owned in my entire life. Uh, yeah. I mean, and by a long shot. So, uh, and I'll probably never get rid of it. So there it is. Uh, and I, I would rather have a 964 if I had. I'll, be honest so anyways yeah. uh all right well there it is uh thanks nathan for telling us about uh columbia valley luxury cars uh or luxury porsches as it were we can help you with some new branding but i think you got you've got <laughs> equity man stick with what you got everybody knows what it is let's get let's go there uh all right so let's talk about yesterday's cars we made some predictions yesterday uh, about the cars that would come up for uh that would hit the auction block uh so let's talk about our numbers from yesterday's does that sound like a plan michael deep do you sure you want to do this? You want to just I know, say, I got kind of hammered there. Uh, it's summarize? true. I went nuts. Um, uh, well, we started out, so we every day we have what we call, call a star car. It's our car of the day. Uh, we're going to be getting to a really cool 3.9 Sharkworks GT3. That's our big star car of the day uh, for today's yeah. cars. But yesterday's big car, uh, we had Bradley Brownell from Rad for Sale on. Uh, and uh, we had to, I mean, it just made sense that we had the big raddest car, the raddest oh. car of the 80s of yeah. all time that's right uh, come on yeah so we started off with the on bring a trailer a 1982 lamborghini countach lp 400 s yeah. series 2 offered from fantasy junction in emeryville california uh, i can't remember how many miles were on this car but it was still relatively low most lamborghinis are for show than go uh but you know these early 400s are kind of rare i mean what you're talking about if you can conceptualize is a 3.9 liter v12 with six weber carburetors a five-speed manual rear wheel drive 375 horsepower and it weighs literally just about 3,000 pounds that is a recipe for fun if you decide to ever drive this thing <laughs> but as we know most gold chain lamborghini wearing people like to just <laughs> rev them in a parking lot and open up the scissor doors and talk about the size of his wife's cups so anyways <laughs> this particular car was poised to make a great run uh, you know based on basic book values four hundred thousand dollars is about all the money for one of these things but we have seen despite the pandemic that some of these you know quote unquote blue chip collectibles have been gaining traction and moving up market uh, our car was already over four hundred thousand when we looked at it with a couple hours to go yesterday morning and by all accounts it seemed it was going to make a big run and maybe reset the bar for a 400 an early 80s version of the car with no wing so i said 450 bradley brandell tried to steal my bid but that's not how it works so he <laughs> jumped up market and said 475 and then shockingly polnick here bet the over on both of us which is really out of character for him he said jp four hundred eighty thousand dollars. i was very near a yahtzee uh, 452,000 is where this car sold at. I missed it by two grand. Uh, two grand sounds like a lot, but when you're talking about 452,000, that's a very small percentage point. Yeah. I was right there. So, uh, JP, what do you think? Surprised by that result? Well, I want to hear what Nathan's take on this is because it's like, uh, I, I love this car clearly, and uh, it's all 80s all the time right there. And it did come <laughs> with the wing in the box. It was it yep. came with the car. Uh, but, uh, Nathan, what do you think of these things? This is all, you, we, like you said, we're all kind of the same age. Yeah. You know, like all of us, we all had posts that said justification for a higher education. That's right. Uh, and that was one of the cars in one of the garage lots. Yeah. We yep. also had one, and, and there was a girl in a bikini, and she had like the, the wash bucket. Somehow she was leaning over in a yeah. somewhat suggestive pose, we'll say, over the, this car washing. Uh, we all had moments that we, hung above our bed. They, right? they call that engaging the core. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but a funny story is, so I left it up this car and the only experience I've ever had in one of these cars is one of my more memorable ones. Uh, I was probably like 24 years old and uh, I won't name said dealer. 
Oh, there it goes. No, we Jake. lost his audio. Dang it. All right. Well, we were... Uh, Nathan, we lost your audio, buddy. Uh, all right. So he's going to try to log back in. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, so where? what was our numbers on those? Uh, or, okay, we already talked about yeah. the numbers. Yeah. So it's, it closed at 452000 It sold at that price. Uh, by all accounts, that's still... Um, high for the market and uh, and a great result so congratulations spencer trenary at uh uh fantasy junction in emeryville i think that's really well sold and congratulations to the buyer uh you got an excellent example a uh, really nice car jp staying on bring a trailer we jumped over to a car that me you and bradley all kind of geeked out on uh we've looked at a lot of volkswagen vans but this one an e6 anakin synchro with an aftermarket high top uh Really, vehicle by all accounts, uh, 300,000 miles. Uh, but if you read the fine, print, it says that he did rebuild the motor, he did rebuild the transmission, uh, he's put a new clutch and like full major service. Uh, this car has been treated to a lot, plus all of the aftermarket accoutrement that make this a sleeper, a camper, uh, overland, uh, deep into the woods or parked out on the beach. Uh, this is your vehicle to just about go anywhere. Uh, Brad Nell said, I had a really great take saying this is, you know, kind of the hipster version of this genre. And this is the one that everybody wants because it's very Instagrammable. So JP, <clears throat> Um, I said 26,000, you bet high at 30 and Branell went over you at $32,000. Mm. Again, I was right there. This car sold for 26,500. Uh, I missed the Yahtzee by 500 bucks. And, wow. Uh, was, you were really close. Nathan, do we have your audio yeah. back? Oh. Nope. Doesn't sound like we got your audio. <laughs> yeah. I think those earbuds are just like hating us. Um, all right, we'll see what happens here. So yeah, that car was really cool. The, uh, Bradley and I, uh, might fit in that thing. I mean, that, uh, oh, I can see goodness, the two of yeah. us, uh, crossing the country. Bradley, let's, uh, let's go ahead and have a cross country, uh, adventure in our, uh, synchro van. Uh, oh, what do we got goodness. next, Steve? Let's, uh, let's move it I, along here. Yeah. So JP, we looked at a 2005 factory five GTM. Uh, this is basically an aftermarket factory five is famous for doing uh, Cobra replicas, but they basically made their own unique body shell to lay over what is essentially a Corvette platform. The idea be being in, in period in 2005, you would be taking a Corvette C5 and turning it into what I assume is like a fiberglass mid-engine supercar um using the 5.7 liter and corvette suspension brakes and wheels and transmission actually no it's a porsche uh get track g50 five speed something you would find hmm. in a 964 uh, using the porsche gearbox the corvette motor corvette drivetrain and then factory five bodywork you you now have something jim was afraid to build at least back then and that is a mid-engine corvette Really cool car. I think JP, remember this had like 300 miles on it. It was basically unused. Uh, so what would one of these be worth? It was hard to guess. And we were all a little bit off on this one. Um, I said 39,000. Uh, you went over at 43 and Brannell came underneath you at 42, splitting our two bids. Mm. Uh, this car jumped all the way up to $53,000 and sold. And that was your only win of the day. You want to check on Nathan? Nathan, can we hear you yet? Ugh. Uh, it does not seem like we uh, we are just having audio issues all over the place. Mm. All right. I really well, I know, right? Um, let's hear it. Him. Yeah, go ahead and go to the next car, and I'll text them see I if will. I can walk them through this. Okay, great. So, uh, JP, we went over to Cars and Bids because Doug DeMiro was offering us a 2004 Maybach or Maybach 62. Now, the 62 is the longer of the two wheelbases. This is essentially a limousine. This car had about 69,000 miles on it, but... For all intent and purposes, this car was in very good used luxury car condition. Uh, it was interesting to note that our car was languishing at like, I don't know, the late high 20s or early $30,000 mark. Uh, and so I felt like I was stepping way out onto an island when I bet $48,000. You strangely undercut me by almost 10000 bucks at 39000 And Bradley Brownell split our bids uh, by going 45000 uh, If you listen to the show again, you'll say, uh, this should be a $60,000 car, but it doesn't look like it's getting any love on the cars and bids platform. And boy, I could not have been more wrong. JP, this car had an incredible finish in the final hour. Um, going from well below your bid to way over my bid 
this car went to $70,428 and sold at that price, which is essentially what that car should be worth. Um, so congratulations uh, to uh, Cars and Bids for bringing the proper money for that car um, because we really didn't think they were going to be able to do it. Yeah, I was shocked uh, so that Maybach brought anything. I mean, I thought it was stalled out there. I yeah. never would have thought that. Yeah, anyways, all right. It looks like we might. Nathan, can we hear you now? Well, I sure hope so. I hey, look at that. Yeah. We got audio. All right. That works. Don't okay. call it a comeback. Man. All right. What well, do you think I'm, of a I'm Maybach? So bummed be... Oh, I was just so, saying I was so bummed because you featured two cars. I want to talk about the uh, Lambo and most importantly, the van. Because I'm a van nut. I drove, I'm actually driving my dope TriStar Synchro today. So. Oh, oh, no oh, kidding. Man. Jay, these people, what is that? It's a dope so what uh, what did you want to say about the Vanagon? We it, you know we make up the rules here. It's not like uh, yeah. it's not like uh, it's someone else's show. What do you think of this thing? You know, actually, what I wanted to say about Vanagons, I guess, if if you follow that market, which I do, because I've got a couple of them in the garage, mm. uh, they're one of the vehicles that have a very cult following, but they don't seem to perform that well on any of the online platforms. Yeah. So. Um, I actually sold a, a beautiful uh, Synchro Westie on Bring a Trailer, and it did okay. Uh-huh. Um, you know, probably more than okay. Um, but I think actually the highest dollars on those things are achieved uh, more like on the Samba, which right. is yeah. sort of interesting. Yeah. Um, they don't seem to perform, uh, particularly on BAT. There's been, uh, frankly, there's very few buys on BAT, but I would say if you're shopping for a Vanagon, I think uh, BAT may actually represent a buy. Yeah. Now, would you suggest that this is our bid nerds take? Because we've been JP's a huge fan of these cars, and my wife really wants one. We don't own one yet. So, in the five six months we've been doing the show, we've covered quite a few of these things. They appear to at least be trending during the pandemic in the right direction as people are looking for, you know, sort of home entertainment. I can't get on a plane and take my kids to wherever country or overseas, but we can buy this and go venture across America. And so, this seems like uh, they are trending in the right direction, even if. BAT or other online forums aren't bringing what you or the experts might consider real market value. Is that a fair take? Yeah, I think the one thing about the West Fall is, is they've they've had a following for years, right? So with their they did for me that people on the outside would have thought were insane, and they suffered a little bit of a downturn when I think people started converting to the printer platform. Sure, uh, that gave them a, the first time ever really a good alternative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for people, Modern- I think have recently come back to them. Yeah. When I was a kid growing up, JP, uh, across the Golden Gate Bridge, you go through Marin County, and there's uh, the longest boulevard in the United States. It's called Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. Uh, and it goes from basically the bay all the way out uh, to a peninsula. Along that route, you come into the uh, like town of Fairfax. And in Fairfax, California, Nathan, there was a guy who in the 80s and 90s used to line up about 20 Volkswagen buses. I assume he was a repair shop, but he clearly also sold the vehicles. Um, I'm sure he went out of business uh, at the beginning of the the century, uh, but that was a neat thing. I always thought that was very smart to be the expert in one field and just have that. And it seemed like people would send their Volkswagen buses from all over the state to have this guy work on them. It was really neat stuff. I wish I remember the name of his business because it would be very interesting footnote in these vehicles history. The way Samba proliferated, this guy was doing it before it was online. You know what I mean? Anyway. All right. All right. All right. So <laughs> let's uh, go on to the next. Uh, last car let's that, go back uh, to the cars. Yeah. Right. Last, last car of the day was on Hemmings Auto News. And JP, this result is arguably just as surprising as the Maybach one. A 1993 300Z, Nissan 300ZX Cabriolet. 37,000 miles, manual transmission, rear-wheel drive, non-turbo. This was a really, really nice preserved example by all accounts. Um, I It was at like 11000 when we were looking at it, $11,000, $12,000. I bet nineteen, thinking it might just not break 20000 You guys went over me. You said twenty one. Brandell went up to twenty. Five thousand dollars. This car had a long finish, but but stalled out at sixteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars, where it was bid up to and failed to sell. It remains available on Hemmings Premium Classifieds, offered at a very weird number of eighteen thousand one hundred fifty dollars. So my bid would have met reserve, but uh, this car. Can you imagine on Hemmings? It didn't find the audience. That's crazy. What do you think of this car? Yeah, Nathan. You know, uh, 
I just think it's a car that, again, the people that want this car, um, we never wanted the open version. You know, it just uh, Coupe great car. It kind of represents for the end of an era for Japanese supercar that era, it will. Um, but to me, the Cabriolet was bought by the uh, retiree from Sun City. Yeah. And, uh, you know, John, I always just chastise you because you're a 993 cab guy. You know, you're in that category, so you should be more hyped on this. But <laughs> yeah. I just think. Well, here's know, the thing. All right. Since you brought it up, uh, there you know. We go. All right. You started <laughs> me on it. Now you took it. So, uh, actually, you know, the day before, there was a, ca- a 996 cab, uh, yeah. you cabriophobe. Um, <laughs> yeah. You should be canceled from uh, from car culture. Uh, so, if this if this car, you know, most of, the, most of these came with. Uh, T tops, so you kind of got that open motoring feel anyway. And this weird bar that goes across the back has really screwed up the beautiful lines on this car. I think this is the the, the coupes really are beautiful versions of this car. Uh, but the the whole uh, the nine nine six that went the day before uh, yeah. that was a cab as well, and that thing was I mean it was just the ugliest version of a nine nine six pretty oh. much ever. I mean it was yeah. gray on gray with yep. the cab and the just hitting hundred thousand miles. Yeah, yeah, and that thing went for no what IMS. was it 23 or something and yeah and they it hadn't had the imf yeah, yeah. It, it, it stalled out at 21 they offered it at 24 it got an offer at 22.5 and they took it and it sold within the hour even though it failed to sell at the close of auction um but there was no ims they, they mm-hmm. couldn't verify whether it had been done or not so you just have to assume that it's not been done uh mm-hmm. meaning that you're going to ship it and spend all the money on service so it was, it was an interesting sale that's a, that's a lot of money for a car that but why bought. why would that one go for more than this car this car had way fewer miles it's a better car uh it's a it's a more classic car do you really think that that 996 cab is worth is a better car than this car uh nathan uh, you know, I think it, it's probably brand related, you know, yeah. I mean, I think well, Porsche carries a certain cachet. I've long said that in any genre of car or, or make, there's always a bottom line. And so for Porsche 911 right now, about the bottom of the market is about that 22.5. And so if yeah. you want to roll a 911, you're not going to find one any cheaper. And yeah. so I just don't think those people would cross shop. You know, the guy who's thinking 911 cab isn't going to cross shop a 300 ZX cab. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would argue yeah, I would not want to buy a gray on gray, you know, no, nobody would. 100,000 mile 996 cab. Uh, I, I personally would rather have that 300 ZX cab for similar money. But yeah, so, yeah. again, they're not cross shopping. Yeah. So with JP, JP, I have one quick take. Mm. Uh, at any given moment, there are about a thousand or more Porsches listed in the classifieds of Hemmings Auto News. And uh, Nathan, correct me if I'm wrong. I think if you're somewhere in this country and you're shopping for a Porsche prior to the proliferation of bring a trailer, you would go to Hemmings to look for a old used 911. And I would say that the, the typical guy that's looking for whatever this is, uh, a Nissan 300ZX cab uh, is not your typical Hemming shopper. And so I think that the platform helped the Porsche uh, and limited the Nissan. The Nissan's got to go, I don't know, wherever else Nissan, you know, somebody's looking for JDM mm-hmm. stuff, isn't your pleated pants Hemmings guy. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I, my problem is I, I don't even know where the venue for the 300ZX cab would be because, again, yeah. the enthusiasts that would be in the JDM stuff, mm-hmm. I don't think would they'd turn their nose at the cab. Sorry, John. But, yep. uh, I, I don't. I don't know if that that's the case. I mean, I think that car um, because the people that are into some of that kind of stuff. I mean, we're we're now talking Radwood. I mean, this is definitely yeah. a Rad for sale car, and oh, I do think sure. it would actually find a much better audience even on BAT because a lot of that Rad um, that Rad audience is definitely there on BAT. And yeah, sure, they'd rather have the cat or they'd rather have the coupe, um, but the cab still represents something that is decidedly undeniably 80s and 90s. I mean, that car is so distinctive and yep. there are people with money uh, that, you know, are looking... It, the nostalgia buy buys that car. Unlike, you know, a better car, like say uh, uh, an F, the, the Ford Focus FX, when you see those kinds of cars on cars and bids, that platform that people don't have the money to buy those cars, they have to finance them so they can't pop on an auction that's going right now. <laughs> um, sure whereas enough. something like this old, this old 300Z or ZX, as it were, uh, is something yeah. that somebody that wants that car probably has the money and that person is sitting on BAT and that pro- that person might be on RAD uh, for sale. That'll be interesting to see how RAD for sale uh, shakes out and how that really super niche part of the market um, you know, comes after. Here, I- I've got a question for you, Nathan. In one word, why would someone buy a 911? 
Ooh. One word. One word. One I'm word. putting him on the spot. Mm, I would say history. History? Really? Yeah. Really? Huh, okay. Uh, that's interesting. That's the, the number one reason that someone would buy a 911 would be history? Yeah, just, I mean, you think about it, it's one of the few cars, I mean, really, other than the Corvette that's mm. been Mustang, I guess, that's been continuously made yeah. for 50 mm. years. So it's yeah. part of everyone's history and story, whether it's an early one or a later mm. one. You pick any car enthusiast from the age of 10 to 80, yeah. they can identify something about with that car. That's yeah. true. It makes it iconic, right? Yep. Mm. All right. Well, uh, let's hear. Let's. Uh, well, the car that we're going to talk about right now, now that we're going to be talking about today's cars, this is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on cars and bids. Yeah. Bring a trailer, P car market, rad for sale, and all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. The big car, the star car, we like to call it, is this unbelievable. Uh, Shark Works 3.9 liter 997. Not just a 997. This is a GT3, isn't it? Yep. 9971 GT3 out of Encinitas, California with 25,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, JP, these cars came with a 3.6 liter version of the Metzger engine. Uh, the seller, the consigner, acquired the car when it was about two years old in 2009. And, and subsequently sent the car to Fremont, California, home of Sharkworks, where he had them perform uh, an, a 3.9 liter kit, which basically overbores the car, uh, you know, three tenths of a liter to increase displacement and increase horsepower. Other modifications include uh, a lightweight flywheel, a new clutch, uh, a different limited slip differential, some aftermarket 19 inch wheels. Uh, what else can I say? Um, RSS suspension, a company I've never heard of, and an EVOMS engine control software unit, uh, and then finished off with a Sharkworks exhaust system. Uh, by all accounts, JP, a lot of people did this mod to GT3 RSs, um, which took them from, you know, again, about the same horsepower up to about, uh, so about 415 horsepower. These cars all jumped up, I think, to ride around 500 normally aspirated horsepower. Um, but it's very rare that's, to see that somebody spent that kind of money on just a standard GT3. It seemed like, at least my take was, more of these kits would be found on RSs, uh, which is interesting. Everything else about this car is stock. I would, honestly, between you and me, I would leave the stock wheels on this thing and then really have uh, you know a shark in wolf's clothing, so to speak. Um, I love these cars, John. I think they're amazing. They handle really well. 997s are a fantastic platform. Uh, and Metzger engines are just absolutely amazing. Uh, destined to be a collector's item despite the modifications. Uh, and this car is having its moment. Uh, it's already at $93,500. And I would say that it's fair to suggest that with 25,000 miles, uh, in that ninety to ninety-five thousand dollar range is where you could pick up a standard uh, GT3 with similar miles. This one looks to be in very good condition and still has an hour and twenty minutes to go, sitting on about eleven bids. So I'd say the over and under on this car is going to be right around a hundred thousand dollars. Nathan, what do you think the uh, the chances are for this car? And would you pay a hundred grand for a car that's had its motor rebuilt when it didn't need to be? Well, a, a couple things. I think that uh, one 997 GT3s are amazing cars, so I appreciate you putting this on here. Um, I think the Shark Works in is very interesting because it's sort of an, an unusual situation. To your point, it wasn't done on an RS, and it wasn't done on a car that looks to have spent any significant time at the track. You know, Typically, this mod was done on tracked-out cars, right. so it's hard to know historically what that would do for the ad because there's usually such a, a deduct for what this would have done because of track use or track time or over revs or things like that. True. So, um, for someone to drop this level of coin on a car and then just use it to go grab groceries is kind of unusual. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be have fun watching this auction, particularly because the 997 GT3 market just in the last even gone from hot to scorching unbelievable hot wow yeah. and so i think you're right in saying that the if this were a stock one it would bring 95 i think if this were a bone stock example i think it would it would have clicked at 102 plus the big um so i think it's up a little bit i mm -hmm. i think this car will do better than you think yeah. although there's a couple things i think that are going to harm this car i think the biggest one and this is should be uh, a 
caveat to anyone who's going to list on any of these auctions is I was really pulling for this seller. If you read his commentary, he was great. You know, he was real honest and transparent and he was kind of funny and, and I liked the guy. And then last night, I think he, uh, <laughs> too many fingers of bourbon and uh, <laughs> someone got a thorn in his side and uh -oh. and he ripped off about 15 comments in a row and god bless it i tell people if you're going to list a car on an auction site you've got to have thick skin <laughs> yeah don't let anybody get to you um it just doesn't work in your favor and it's right. unfortunate because it's a great car um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that plays out. But give um, us a scoop. What did he say? What right are we talking the about? Guys, commentary. You know, read it. it it's kind of good entertainment. Oh, her, her, we don't her, read her, anything. Her, 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 People are watching the show. We want to hear oh, the come dirt. On, come on. on. This was like <laughs> JP on March 10th at 10:40 p.m. Uh, Igorian, the seller, said. Uh, at R. R Dave, you're a piece of crap driving inspector, question mark. That <laughs> sentence alone is exactly what our guest uh, is alluding to without. Uh, these are not alleges. This is in writing on the Internet, uh, accompanying to a car he's trying to represent with, um, you know, some monochrome of heart and integrity. Uh, so, yeah, he, he kind of ruins his own reputation. It's like getting the witness to break. So yeah. uh, there you, you go. You can't handle I, the I, truth, it, apparently. Yeah. I Look, this car. Yeah, you need me on that fence. <laughs> well, <laughs> this car. Huh? enough, actually, BAT moderated this. I just yeah, noticed I'm they, they pulled down that... all his uh, commentary. Oh, okay. Not all of it, but they pulled down 90% of his stuff. commentary, which actually he should give them a tip. He should thank yeah. them because he's going to wake up this morning and say, you know, I probably should have moderated myself a little bit. But um, let's get back to the car. I think the car is great. Um you know, I think I think it would have done a skosh better with original wheels. Thank uh, you. I think that's going to hold it back a little bit. Yeah, sell the wheels um, and get Ford Grand back. Exactly. I think that would be the only thing I would do to the car. It's got the right miles for a guy who wants to drive it. Yep. Um, it's got a good history. Many of these cars have had, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten owners by this point. You know, it's been a California car since new. That, that works in its favor. Um, yeah, I, I think this car uh, might surprise a few people in what it what it does. Look, this car, yeah. Nathan, you said you have OCD uh, when it comes to cars, and uh, typically I don't. I, I let a lot of stuff go. I, I, don't, I just don't sweat the small stuff. But this guy uh, <laughs> is really ticking me off. I don't care what he says on the internet, but my design OCD is just full tilt freaking out right now. I love the idea of putting a, a subtle 3.9 on here just to let people know that, okay, this is something different. But he's got this logo crowded way over here in the corner, right up in the edge. He doesn't have clear space around the logo. I mean, it just looks so tacked on. Like he got it from, he got a 3.9 badge from, you know, Shucks Auto or you know, O'Reilly's or something and stuck it on there. It's like putting a fake cell phone antenna on your car back in the 90s. And then the same thing with his damn, he's got the, uh, I love that sticker that says, uh, you know, the, the Preservation Society. Was it the Manual P Preservation Society? You can't see it on this picture, guys, but you can see he just doesn't have it centered in this space well enough. He's got it too close to the edge. Man, somebody, uh, when you're putting stickers on, get somebody that knows design. You can't be crowding those lines. Ticking me off. I wouldn't buy this car just because of that. Those split fives are pretty hideous too. Uh, oh but what God. a what a fantastic car. I so want a GT3. And, I, and I'm with you, Nathan. White, hot, red, hot, blistering, sun scorching hot. The GT3 market is just taken off. And uh, I'm curious to see what you guys' bid on this car is going to be. Michael Deep, where is it going to land? One hundred and eleven thousand dollars, and it sells at that price. One eleven sale, Nathan. What do you think? One fourteen. One fourteen. All right, I'm going one fifteen. Uh, oh I do goodness. think the Shark Works is going to bring the extra money. I think if somebody that's smart knows that it's very easy to change those wheels, they're going to have thick skin. They don't care what the guy calls them on the internet, uh, and they're going to peel that three point nine off and put it in the right spot, wherever that might be. <laughs> it's not where it is. Uh, oh, all right, well there it is, guys. That's our bids on the GT3 Shark Works thing. This thing is so bad. The Shark Works. Shark works. All right. Yeah, and uh, just a warning, uh, JP. This guy may tonight may hear your your uh, your podcast and mm -hmm. throw back some uh, negative comments your way. So be prepared. 
Bring it, buddy. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Nathan, JP and I both own sunglasses. We love the shade. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, sir. And again, I was pulling for this seller. I loved his early commentary. If you ever listen to this, I really appreciate his honesty. If you read his comment about having that's a little off track excursion, it was great. I thought, oh, this guy's cool. This car looks like it's in <laughs> Florida. Where's this car? Is it in Florida? Uh, no, Encinitas, California. Encinitas, California. All right, I was going to say yep, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're never going to see this guy. It's no. too nice for Florida. Remember, every every yeah. car story in Florida starts yeah. a man from Florida. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. JP. Let's stay on Bring a Trailer, and we're going to okay. go in a totally different direction here. 1985 Land Rover Defender 90. Hold on, um, hold on, you- hold on. That Shark Works would have been better if it was a convertible. Just saying. Anyways, okay. So you were uh, saying Land Rover. Land Rover. He's- Nathan, he's dreaming. They didn't make a GT3 convertible. My <laughs> yeah. lord. Thank you, God. Uh, yeah. That's why it would have been better. Oh, thank you, God. Okay, they made the Speedster as a GT3, basically, convertible, and that's the best GT3 of all time. Uh, <laughs> undeniably, everyone agrees with me. If you don't agree with me, you're wrong. It's not about opinion. It's just what is right and what is wrong. All right, let's get to this uh, Land Rover. I really like this thing. All right. So, 1985 Land Rover Defender 90. If you're scoring this at home, that's correct. At least I think I'm correct. I don't know these cars very well. Uh, they did not bring the Defender 90 in 1985. So our car hails from Portugal. Uh, it has 46,000 kilometers, which translates to 28,000 miles. It is powered by a 2.5 liter diesel inline four with a five speed manual transmission. Of course, it has two transfer cases because it's four wheel drive. It is unusual to see these gray market Land Rovers in left hand drive. So many of them are sold in countries where they are right-hand drive. Uh, so this would probably have a uh, fair value in the United States by the location of the steering wheel alone. Um, by all accounts, this is not a wagon, but rather a soft top version of the Defender 90. Uh, and these things are super cool because it doesn't have the modern 90s Defender 90 look. This one if you painted it some sort of seafoam green and told me it was a 1965, I would believe you because I can't tell the difference. Super cool car. Uh, JP, pull up a photo of this interior. Can you get a picture of those I'm seats? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Come on, man. Did, give me, give did, me a break. <laughs> did this thing come like that? I, I mean, when I look at this, I think that has to be an aftermarket interior job. I'll let you guys comment in a minute. The uh, espresso brown interior reminds me of special $4,000 interior offered on 997 and 991 uh, 911s. Um, super cool interior, very high design, not what I would expect. Just having carpets is not what I would expect for a vehicle of this nature. Uh, so you guys jump in here and tell me if somebody did that since they've owned the car or if it came that way from Land Rover because uh, that's a real head scratcher for how nice it is when you consider how old fashioned the design of this vehicle is. Um, uh, clearly, vehicles of this era are being brought in on the 25 year rule and this is going to have some value to somebody here in the states uh with five hours to go at a clearwater florida a man from florida is selling this 1985 land rover defender it's sitting at twenty two thousand dollars already on a whopping 27 bids uh nathan correct me with all the mistakes i made on that car because i really don't know him that well Okay, well, I'll correct you on the first three things. First off, it's not a Defender, but we'll, we'll yeah. nitpick BAT for that. The Defender yeah. nomenclature didn't come about until, I believe, 89 or 90. Thank uh, you. So this is just a Series 90. Thank you. Um, d- doesn't make uh, a whole lot of difference other than us nerds. You know, I guess we yeah. are on a bid nerds. We, we are. That is correct, right. sir. So We are. We are. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're correct in that the majority of these are right-hand drive. So having a left-hand drive configuration for any of us who've ever owned a right-hand drive car, I always tell people either you're a nerd and you like them or you only have one. I'm a only have one kind of guy. Right. It seems neat and interesting, and then you live with it and you try to pass on a two-lane road. You try to do <laughs> drive through the Starbucks drive through and you realize this is a pain. Yeah. Um, so I think left-hand drive is going to help this car out. But I, I think the thing with this, what strikes me is it's a weird mismosh. Uh, I love the, the color change on the outside. It definitely fits the character of the vehicle. And then to me, the interior is a total misfit. It's, you know, how would one want to use this car? To me, this is, I guess, if you're just going to take it to Neiman Marcus and it's a nice little status symbol to drive around Scottsdale, fine. But uh, yeah. the, the purpose of me having one of these things is I want to beat the living hell out of it. Right. And so now I got carpet and I got, you know, a leather interior that frankly seems like a Nissan design pattern for the seat from the 90s. Uh-huh. It's just a weird mismosh. And yet you have a really fundamentally functional layout. It's a normally aspirated two and a half liter 
uh, diesel, so it's gutless, it has no heat, it's just soft. So to me, you know, work this thing no top, just the painted <laughs> interior and, and vinyl seats and call it good. But that's just Excuse me. me. Well, they went another step further. This isn't just, I mean, yeah, you're, they went, I mean, this thing's like full-blown resto mod thing. The, the interior, I, I'm with you, Nathan. It's a little odd what they did with the seats there. I mean, it is nice having the leather and stuff, but they went like full tilt. They wrapped the dash. They wrapped the door right? cards. They wrapped the steering wheel. Uh, I Bizarre. mean, this kind of looks like something maybe Icon would do, and I appreciate the workmanship because it does look pretty nice. But yeah, from a functionality point of view, this really is supposed to be, as utilitarian a vehicle as you could possibly get and that's basically what it is i mean uh, but with all the leather you're like okay if you if you try to go through a bunch of a big huge mud puddle and uh, a bunch of crap gets in all that fancy leather work is going to is going to be uh, really destroyed. So yeah, vinyl or some really basic leather, uh, and then keep everything else, uh, just metal and vinyl and plastic and stuff like that. And I think you're good. Uh, JP, it, it does JP. seem to not know where it, it's it, yeah. Identity crisis. What's up? Yeah. It, it just seems to me that the guy that owns this car would drink whiskey or rum straight from the bottle. And the guy who owns this example probably drinks Chardonnay uh, because they're out of his favorite Sauvignon Blanc. Is that fair to say? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Here's the thing. The other thing, too, is that, I mean, it is a great boulevard cruiser. This would be great for somebody that's out in the desert, like where I'm at, uh, to cruise the Vegas Strip with no roof and uh, fold the front windshield down, uh, and you're just out there with everybody looking cool. Uh, that's great, too, but it really depends on how much money this thing goes for. Uh, right. if, it's a, if, it's a, if it goes for a low dollar, then okay. If it's crazy dollars, there's, you start getting into a bunch of other options, like wagons or, or you know modern you know north american land rovers and stuff like that that uh that are actual defenders yes uh i don't know okay so where do we think this I, thing's gonna land what's where's I, it gonna i'm with you nathan i think if you own one of these you want to be able to beat the snot out of it and the carpet and the interior kind of hold you back because it's it's like they made it too nice so uh anyways it's sitting at twenty two thousand dollars. look guys i don't know these cars very well at all um i, I put kind of a high bid here at forty five thousand. i'm going to temper that because it hasn't really gotten much action overnight uh, it's still on 27 bids people are watching it and and these things do bring decent money uh but i'm just going to cool it down a little bit and say forty thousand dollars and mm -hmm. leave it there for you guys to jump over or under nathan your turn you know i think what's going to happen i think this is going to go uh reserve not met i uh -huh. just don't think it's garnering enough interest for the reasons that we talked about and i think with seller parties a lot of money i think Fairness, you'll probably get our hand chopping this. So I'm going to predict it's going to die out at 34,750. Wow. Uh, <laughs> 34,750, is that the number that you said? I, I, I like Nate a lot. That's awesome. That's a great bid and great take. 34,750. Yeah. Um, I like this car a lot better than both of you guys. I'm actually not that worried about the interior being a little too nice. Um, I love the color. I love the overall look. I love its simplicity. Um, you know, I, I'm not an original guy. I could care less about stuff being original. Um, I, whether or not that means that uh, this thing is going to bring all the money. Uh, it's got five hours to go. That's a long yeah, way. Long will it break yeah. 40 or will it be under? And I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say this thing's breaks 40. I'm going to say it's 41 because it is oh, really dang stop. nice. Uh, <laughs> and it's a left-hand drive and we're seeing right-hand drive ones uh, go in the high 30s. So this one with okay. a left-hand drive, this is... This is this is awesome. All right, moving All on. Right. What do we got next? All right, JP. Uh, one of my favorite cars from my childhood. This is the 1966 Ford Mustang Shelby GT 350H with a four-speed manual, offered out of Chatsworth, California. Um, shows 19,000 miles, but the true mileage is unknown. Uh, I, I, most of even the nerds out there know the story that uh, you know Hertz wanted to uh, make a deal. Uh, with Ford, and they basically had Ford and Shelby produce for them a special edition uh, in, in some sort of partnership with the SCCA. So the idea being that Shelby furnished Hertz with Hertz badged vehicles for them to rent, and they called it uh, the Rent Eraser Program. The idea being that you could go into a Hertz dealership, uh, Hertz. Uh, rent a market get a mustang take it and go do a drag race over the weekend and possibly win if you had any talent and take the car back so you could go get a trophy without earning the car 
Um, and by all accounts, it was hugely successful. They made other Hertz models uh, later in the uh, 60s and early 70s. Um, but these cars are now the stuff of legend because what looks like your basic Shelby GT350 has the gold Hertz colorway um, and trim. And these cars I now finally are getting their due and command a premium. Uh, Ford has also reached back into their uh, archives and they've made uh, later versions of these cars, uh, at least by decoration, by doing the black and gold uh, and the white and gold uh, liveries to as a homage to these cars. But these 66 ones were the ones to get, especially with a manual transmission. Uh, this one has a tachometer. It was refurbished in the early 80s and by all accounts is an excellent uh, car. Uh, maybe not a show winner, but certainly a better than just driver quality. Um, I'm a huge fan. And since the old man passed away, uh, these are starting to bring uh, bigger and bigger numbers. Um, these cars were $100,000 for years. Uh, and the really nice ones now are creeping up over 200,000 bucks. Our car has less than an hour ago. It's sitting at just $116,000, uh, where I doubt it will stay, uh, but it's on 18 bids. So the question is, you know, does this jump up to 150 or is this going to like almost double in value in the final hour and make it too close to that $200,000 range that I am professing these cars are starting to be worth? So, uh, Nathan, bring your expertise from the domestic market and tell me how far off I am in my assessment. You know, I don't, I don't track the values on these ones, so I won't weigh in too much in, in my expertise in values, but I know this car is an interesting car itself because they only built 85 manual transmission cars. And wow. so this is not an original four-speed car. So it's a change. Right, it's a trans, uh, trans yeah. Mm. Four-speed transmission was changed, uh, that's right. And originally BAT put this car on the market as a matching numbers car. There was a lot of controversy about that. They've now backed off that claim. The seller, his contention is he took the car on trade and is not that that knowledgeable, which I think was a, a wise tack for him to take. Yep. Um, some knowledgeable GT350H experts have weighed in on this car um, and sort of called into question some of that stuff. But I do think, again, it is, it's a gorgeous car. It's very well presented. I put, think they put that in the right platform. So I think a lot of this noise about originality will probably... Uh, hold the values back a little bit but i think the car again it's the right color it's just so damn sexy it is um, isn't it? and it is a real hertz mustang which you know you think about this is so funny the, the idea that they would actually have done this i mean they would <laughs> never do that now nope um and so well they wouldn't they wouldn't let you race them but they do do it now they uh during Hertz had a bunch of these the brand new ones that when the uh pandemic hit they had to sell them off you could get them cheap uh they had the Hertz Mustangs with the with the gold all over it um but yeah you couldn't they they, they would never there would never be a box on the insurance thing that says yeah go ahead and uh uh, and yeah. race it. Uh, they, take they, it were on the exactly. to, yeah. they were yeah. marketed to race, which is just yeah. incredible. It, yeah, it could not, it, the lawyers wouldn't allow it to happen. It's not possible. Is that today. tack on the dash? Is that something that somebody put in aftermarket? Is that really That's correct? What they aftermarket. Did? That is an aftermarket tack. Okay. Because it does look a bit bolted to the dash. Uh, boy. The, the, Nathan, the ones that, that you, if you ordered the tack, didn't the dash kind of foam form over the tack? The tack would be in the same location, but there'd be like a hump in the dash that went over it to cover the tack. Does that sound familiar? You know, I will um, actually defer to an expert on that. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm not a domestic guy. Yeah. I've always liked these. You know, I always tell people I have, a, I have an older brother who was dropped on his head as a baby. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's into Mustang. So if he's listening, yeah. he's going to yell at me later tonight. But he's always been a Mustang guy. So I'd be calling him for his expertise yeah, when it comes to go. Mustangs on questions That's great. like that, for sure. <laughs> See, JP thinks you and I were dropped on our heads because we, we don't love cabs as much as he does. But nobody loves cabs as much as he does. There you know, the market you speaks on that, JP. The market <laughs> says you're a lonely guy and you're just going to be flanked by uh, – yeah. Older ladies uh, driving there in Scottsdale. You know, you know what the you know what the market <laughs> likes. Uh, the market likes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> let's let's think of some things that the market likes. The market <laughs> likes uh, sitcoms and uh, Def Leppard. Yeah, no, actually, I like Def Leppard. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a lot of Everybody things that that, that have mass appeal. A lot of people go to NASCAR races. A lot more people <laughs> go to NASCAR races than show up to uh, a Porsche event. That's for sure. Um, look at the here's the, those guys. Uh, 
just don't go in cabriolets, you'll notice. Well, that, that is said. true. Uh, <laughs> because they have no taste. Exactly. They. What are you talking about? <laughs> You know, wow. I was trying to I was trying to goat you into this idea of, you that know, the one good. word and you got a great answer, the history answer. I don't necessarily uh, uh, that is you I asked, you know, what was the one word that gets people into 9/11s? You said history. Uh brilliant answer, but uh, you know, frankly, I could again, I think a lot of people don't care about history. I certainly don't. Um I love the cars, but you're right. I think there is an argument to be made that even though I don't care about the history of the car, I think that the reason why I love a 911 is because without that history, there's no way I would dig it. However, most people use when you say one word, <laughs> all, 9 out of 10 people will come up with visceral and uh, there's nothing more visceral than a convertible. Uh you know, I just don't get that <laughs> that people they talk they'll, they'll say how great 911s are and how fun they are to drive but they want to be enclosed in this little box you know it's like cat people versus dog people you know uh, it's not that it's not you prefer a cat over a dog it's that cats like sitting in small confined spaces and looking out at the world because they're scared of everything whereas dogs are so stupid that the second you put them in a car they stick their head out the window and they run to the other side and stick their head out the other side of the window and uh, there it is I'm a dog person I'm dumb and I like the air going through hair that I don't have okay there's my rants on convertibles uh here's one of those shelby uh hertz mustangs that they just came right. out with recently um how awesome is that actually <laughs> i kind of kind of like yeah. that car what that, do you think of that, that car, car Nathan? Is... Yeah. which one the the it's the hertz mustang i've got on the string can, can you see it yeah oh yeah yeah you know like i said i uh i'm not a big mustang guy i'll just have to i'll just have to say it out there i'm gonna I'll defer to my brother he can hold up the mustang torch in the family although I will admit this on television. I did, uh, when I was at Amelia Island last year, Hertz did have a new, uh, one of the turbocharged EcoBoost Mustangs. And I thought, oh, I'll take it. It'd be kind of interesting. And mm. I discovered it has line lock. And I'm like, God bless it. So let's just say when I returned it, I think it started with about eight thirty seconds tread depths on the rear tires. I think I might've returned it with about three thirty seconds tread depths. On the rear. <laughs> just <laughs> making sure for the next user. You're doing you God's work, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's another question for you, Nathan. Uh, so, uh, c- okay, we we've already established that you don't like convertibles, and I get that, and I I, I totally uh, understand that I am in the minority there. But what about what about manual versus PDK? I mean, you got to hand it to the American cars. You can walk into a Mustang dealership, and I'm with you, Nathan. I don't know Mustangs. In fact, I kind of hate them. Uh, I really do like this particular Mustang. Uh, but you could walk into a Ford dealership or. K- uh, Chevrolet dealership and they have Mustangs and Camaros uh, on the showroom floor with three pedals. Uh, Porsche, you got to give them your firstborn and you know, all the extra stuff. What do you, and wait forever. What's your take on manual versus PDK and availability and that sort of thing? Well, uh, you know, my first caveat would be, you know, God intended a car to have three pedals. Thank you. I firmly believe common that. ground. Actually, we found it, common ground. All right. There we it's go. Deep into the Bible, you got to read it uh, a long way past like <laughs> yeah. Leviticus and stuff, and there's a whole section <laughs> on there about manual gearboxes. Uh, so study your Bible for those Christians out there. You'll learn some interesting stuff. But uh, <laughs> that's how I view it. Um, I think the PDK is an amazing gearbox. Technologically, I have no qualms with it. Yeah. Um, I will absolutely agree. Objectively, it's better. Um, but objectively, that's not why we're buying the stuff we're buying, particularly when you buy classic cars, then you'd only buy the latest and greatest if all you cared about were some numbers, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I do think I will give kudos and props, yes, to, you know, American muscle cars. They can be found with three pedals. I think their they're demographic, and I don't know this for a fact, probably skews a little bit younger than Porsches. Yeah, probably. And <laughs> I hate to say it is as people age, the take rate on three pedal car drops, yeah. right? People start sure. making excuses or talking about their knee replacement or sitting in LA traffic and they, they give you all those answers. Um, with that said, I don't want to sound like I'm only hating on Mustang because I would totally, I'm shopping right now. Uh, I'm going to shout out to my good friend, View Gwynn, who's uh, pushing mm-hmm. me to buy a Fox body five liter Mustang. So yeah. That's, my shopping list. <laughs> that's Just the only I good can. Mustang. Thank you very much. Hell yeah. Yeah. I wasn't blessed with much chest hair, but the little bit that I have, I want to rock out. <laughs> and so uh, that's on my list. So I'm, I'm trying to find a nice one of those. I want an original one. MC um, Hammer and, and actually, Ken Griffey Jr. and Vanilla Ice all agree with you. Oh, oh my God. Totally. That is the correct and, um, dubious list. 
and the modern coyote powered you know five liter mustangs i think is a pretty compelling car for the dollar so i'm not no. hating on it at all yeah all right, All right. cool. That was that fun was uh, to go down a rabbit hole <laughs> there. Oh, yeah, we're talking about a Mustang. Any idea how much this thing is actually going to hammer for in five All hours right. or maybe four hours now that we just took took an hour to talk about 10 other things? Um, JP, out of Chatsworth, California, in 1966, Shelby Mustang, an original GT350H, but with a replacement four-speed manual, is still sitting at just $116,000, but... JP, it's only got 42 minutes left to go. Mm. Uh, strangely, uh, it's on 18 bids. I would think something like this would get a little more action despite the, uh, the gearbox change. Um, so with the gearbox change in mind, I think that's going to hold it back. I think this car will top out and sell at $159,000. But if it didn't have the gearbox change, I think it would bring at least $20,000, maybe $25,000 more than my bid. I could see this car getting up into that 180, 185 range. Uh, how nice it is. Uh, Nathan, what say you? 159 is my bet. You know, I think you're probably close. I mean, the high water mark, you know, back in December... 11 R and Garland uh, did 234 on one of these, uh, but it was a, a fresh restoration, a markedly nicer without as much controversy, uh, albeit an automatic car. On with you, the only thing I would say is I don't know that the transmission swap is going to hold this car back because overall the car is a little bit more driver quality. Right. And frankly, a four speed car is way cooler to own, actually. And so someone can drive and use and enjoy and fog this yeah. car. So I think. Because of where it's at in the market, if it were a true condition one car, I think the gearbox swap would hold it back. I think because of its quality, I don't think it will. Um, and I think the seller is not emotionally connected to this car. So I think he's <laughs> going to be realistic with his reserve, which I think will help. It's a good take. Um, I think the car will end up doing 147. All right. Um, is my number on this car. There you go. That's a good good take. Where are you at, JP? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm kind of with you on both both you guys. I think that, uh, that, that this is a much better car than the original version of this. Uh, this is a car I would love to own something like this with the manual. Oh, if with Absolutely. an automatic, I wouldn't even, if it were, if I want it down the street at one of the casinos, I wouldn't even drive it. I would just be like, all right, give me the money or something like that. But this car is something that you would absolutely want to drive, uh, which makes, to me, it seems it should be worth more but it's not it is i i think it's going to bring 135 what yeah. well, well right. jp you know if it was your favorite model <laughs> it would be a 66 mustang convertible six cylinder convertible with automatic you. a I six mean, cylinder <laughs> convertible automatic wait a second yeah what happened yeah. there with, what with happened there how did it now okay all right <laughs> hold the phone um see now you're just disparaging see all right i'm, I'm gonna get you a wonder bread uh nascar jacket for christmas yeah. uh for the record uh, i do agree that uh coupes look better than convertibles generally uh, right, you know, cool. and I've said that a million times, they look better, but the convertibles are just more fun. If you're an actual driver, if you like to drive cars, then you drive a convertible with a stick. There are no <laughs> automatics in my driveway. I have had three Cayennes in my life and they've all been manuals. So wow. there it is. Um, yeah. So you, you burn right. back some respect. Ah, there you go. Moniker, right, just a little bit, just a smidge. We're going to jump right. over to cars and bids because Doug DeMiro is offering us <laughs> uh, a very unusual 2009 Volkswagen Golf GTI Rabbit Edition with what he calls some modifications. Uh, offered yeah. out of the Colony, Texas with 23,000 miles. This Cornflower Blue Edition with the very cool Titan Black and Clark Plaid interior is a six-speed manual front-wheel drive uh powered by the audi derived i think uh two liter turbocharged inline four which makes this so unique and let me see if i can read this to you is that it has been lifted up in the air with volkswagen products uh borrowed the shocks and struts from the volkswagen all track this car has a gentle lift and then some uh what they call cross climate tires michelin cross climate tires to give this kind of an overland look which is really neat there's some other modifications too gp um we're talking about apr stage two low tark tune it also has dkm ms stage three clutch uh and then the aforementioned shocks and suspension lift um and there you go a few other little cosmetic touches but nothing really worthy of mention uh how cool is that to see a GTI basically kind of in the air that you could take on a dirt road? Do we think this would hold up if we, uh, 
you know, went out and did big, huge drifts on a dry lake in Las Vegas, JP? Or is this just a, a cars and coffee lift? You know what I mean? What do you think, Nathan? Well, you know, I am a Volkswagen fanatic. Um, I once had a customer who uh, made fun of me or thought he was going to make fun of me. He says, you know, Nate, deep down, you're really just a Volkswagen guy. And I said, ah, you've actually called it. So, yep. uh, <laughs> uh, again, right after in the Bible, it says a uh, car supposed to be a six speed manual. He also says that uh, Volkswagen and the GTI is the ultimate everyday car. So I'm yeah. a big fan of this car. I love the cornflower blue. Yep. I always love the plaid in here. Um, I, I love almost everything about it. I, I'm not a big fan of the whole all track uh, suspension lift. To me, this is so hipster, so Instagram worthy. Right. Um, <laughs> With no real functional attribute. To me, it's like the opposite. Now, people are finally said, okay, putting it on airbags and basically, you know, having a one millimeter of fender clearance is no longer the look. Now we're going to go with this look. Right. How about we actually just tune it for performance, which is what this car is. Nice set of coilovers, a nice ride height, Thank and you. drive the car intended. This, to me, like I had a brand new 2017 Alltrack I ordered with a manual. And uh, it was a great car, but the very first thing I wanted to do to it was suspension because it came yeah. wally soft. Right, so right, right. a wally soft GTI is is a weird one to me. I I don't get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, JP? but yeah, I mean, you saw, I mean, uh, was it on the new, uh, the, the grand tour, the, the, the top gear guys, when they started doing when they did their reasonably priced car track thing, like they used to do on top gear, they changed it to that thing that kind of people are into. This is kind of like rally cross thing where half of the race is on the street and half of the race is in the dirt. Uh, and so I think from a functionality point of view, this car is totally functional. If you are looking for a rally sport type car, I think if it would have been really true really hipster they would have gone with knobby tires because uh, that seems to be the thing to do <laughs> you know i mean you know lift the world right safari everything um this wow. car is actually a legit rally car uh this is something that would compete with something like a wrx uh or you know in that kind of world so uh, although it, it is tons of fun and in and, and i you know i don't know why you would do this to a gti and why you wouldn't just do this to a golf r because the golf r has the all-wheel drive this is just a front wheel drive car which is going to do really well on that muck and slidey stuff too uh but a golf r is definitely the better tool for that um i i'm with nathan if i own this car i would have it you know nice and <clears throat> excuse me nice and low and uh make this a street car i don't think this the, you know we it's funny though deep we did talk about the idea of of safariing a, 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 a gti on a past episode i can't yeah. remember why we talked about it well um, we were we, we've been all over uh mark twos and we were probably talking about a mark ii how yeah. cool that would be to do one like that because so yeah. many of them are beat up it's yeah. like you're gonna spend all the money to bring it back to stock or do you just enhance the patina and then maybe go overland which would be kind of yeah. cool uh but i agree i think these early these, these newer platform cars uh actually can handle really well you get a limited slip differential in mm -hmm. that front diff uh and coilovers and you will shock a lot of people on your favorite back road in a volkswagen like that'd be crazy nathan how I'm, great would this car be out at dirtfish right uh if anybody is in the northwest that's the rally school out there yeah, I'm with you, though. To me, if I'm going to do one of these things, it's got to be an R. I've got an yeah. R04 R32, which is another mm. just unbelievably mm -hmm. amazing yep. car. So, Very yeah, exhaust. to me, a, a front driver, um, again, it does have LSD. Um, the other thing is you got to remember the, the all tracks only get an inch more ground clearance. So this thing, you know, a stock GTI, you're running about four inches of ground clearance. You're lucky to have five inches of ground clearance. Not a lot more suspension travel. Like, to me, if you were going to do it, do something with some, some long suspension travel and make it a little more functional. So, and it's just so darn pretty in the cornflower blue. I'd be, I'd feel bad taking this thing out right. to dirt fish. Um, what's I'd want to bang up one. What's it going to bring? Michael D, you what's know, this car going to bring? Actually, let's start with right. Deeb and then we'll give you a shot, uh, yeah, Nathan. I don't think there's a lot of room left in this car because, again, I, I don't know. It's, it's sitting at uh, $18,069 on 21 bids out of mm -hmm. the Colony, Texas. And I don't think anybody's going to pay a premium for what's been done to this car. In fact, I, I think it, he's narrowing his audience but because he's polarizing uh, the appeal of this vehicle that should, by all accounts, uh, be something that everybody would be gravitating towards. So I think he's actually holding this car back with the mods that he's done. And for that reason, I think it's only going to get up maybe another three grand. I'm going to say $21,000. And I have no idea if it meets its reserve because uh, ch chances are this guy loves it more than everybody else does. Nathan, what do you think? 
You almost took my number. I was going to say yeah. twenty one seven fifty, and it's Do not it. going to sell. And in yeah. fairness to the seller, I I don't know that I would sell it. I mean, he clearly does love the car, yep. and um, it it exactly suits him. I I think it's great. I think long term it'll do fine with this color combo. Um, I just think he's a little strong on it right now. That's my gut. Okay, JP, where you at? Uh, I'm just uh, quickly looking at a video here. Is this guy wearing a helmet in traffic, or was he yep. actually on a? Yes. He's not on a track. Nope. He just thought it looked cool. He wanted to wear his helmet, he said. That was his yep. comment. Uh, 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 Kudos uh, to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I was like, what, whatever, dude. Uh, I don't know. what. What's the CarMax value on this car? I mean, it's on yeah. Cars and Bids. Uh, cars and Bids, whoever wants this car cannot afford to buy this car with cash, uh, which means they're going to need to march themselves down to the credit union or uh, and get a, get a loan. They can afford to own this car. This is a very easy car to own, but the 22-year-old the that's going to buy this doesn't have $20,000 sitting there. So how can you oh. buy this car? Uh, what was your bid, Deeb? It was twenty. What? I was twenty one and Nathan is twenty one seven fifty. I'll go twenty. I, I mean I think it's got a couple grand more maybe and yeah. All right. I just don't think it gets there. All right. Uh last car of the day. We gotta move this one along. We're going long, guys. Yep. We're having yep. a good All time. Right. What do we got next? All right, JP, this one uh, is a car you almost bought. It's a mm. 1996 Ford Bronco XLT mm. 4x4 with just 12,000 original miles. This one is powered uh, by an automatic transmission. This one also has the larger of the two engines. I believe it's a 5.8 or a 351 Ford spec motor. Uh, it's sitting on $25,000 with about two hours to go. Offered to us out of Marina del Rey, California. They call that Dark Toreador Red. Uh, and the uh, it's offered by the dealer Checkered Flag International uh, down there in Marina del Rey. Um, JP, listen, we, we've been noting that some of these cars from the late 60s and early 70s have been bringing a premium. Do we think these 80s era cars, even though this is a 96 all the tech on this car is from the 1980s. I mean, if, if you told me that was an 85, wouldn't it look almost identical? <laughs> Pretty close, uh, are, yeah. are, are the cars, are this next generation of those cars, are they destined for big things? Is this going to become one of these, you know, I don't know, just strangely overpriced collectibles? $25,000 seems like all the money, and yet this car still has two hours to go. 12,000 miles means it's brand new. This is, you know, show quality version of this car. Nathan, what say you weigh in on this thing and, and help us understand uh, why people kind of lose their minds over these things? You know, it's, it's a little hard to say because um, I think they're neat. I enjoy them, but, you know, I enjoyed them when you could buy them on Craigslist for five to $10,000. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, they don't drive any different than that generation uh, old body style F-150, uh, which don't drive particularly amazingly well. Um, which of course those are doing well on, mm -hmm. on these platforms, but yeah, it, I don't know. I think it's a carryover from early Broncos and, uh, various things like that blazers where they just, you can't buy an early one of those. And these are better built than that. So, um, they've proven they've got legs. I don't know whether it's going to last. Uh, it, it's hard to say this particular example leaves me a little conflicted. Um, it's a complete repaint um which to me is odd on a twelve thousand mile car yeah. they did a complete refresh underneath the truck which looks gorgeous but again you know having one done on a twelve thousand mile car and it's got a crack dash and they also got rid of the rear swing away tire it's just got some weird mist mosh to it um i think it's it's beautifully done but i personally if i'm going to spend big bucks i want i want a more original one i don't want that's been painted and the chassis all refreshed it's it strikes me as odd yeah, it does seem weird that it's bringing this big money. I mean, the 90s ones, um, I mean, if it were white and, uh, you know, I mean, the, the famous OJ car would bring the big money. But uh, in this color, uh, like you said, that repaint is just, and it's not even really a very good repaint, but Broncos are so hot right now and the K5s are bringing so much money and the top of this does come off, that back top does come off. So, uh, which is going to make it worth less, obviously, to all you guys. Um, no, I, <laughs> uh, I, it's a neat truck if uh, I'm with you, Nathan. If you could get this for like seven or eight grand or something like that this would be an awesome mob around the woods drive around have some fun with it take it off road uh but to pay a premium what the hell i don't i don't get it uh what's it gonna bring yeah. deep oh dude i th this one's yeah. already scratching my head it's at yeah. twenty five thousand bucks um i well. gotta believe there's another uh, five grand in it and i'll go thirty thousand dollars because 
Somebody wants to have one. Uh, we, the one thing we didn't mention is the whole uh, OJ, you know, cachet. You know, did, did somebody buy well, one? Well, I just mentioned that. What do you do? Oh, yeah, I, 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 I don't count. Reading. I don't yeah, get. Yeah, no. uh, you, nobody listens to me. Yeah, sorry, JP. I was, you know, you're like family. I wasn't listening. Sad, <laughs> sad. Face. Nathan, what do you think? I say thirty. Nathan, over to you. Well, you know, I I, I probably cheated a little bit. I did a little research, and oh, uh, this interestingly enough, research. this car was a reserve, not met on BAT recently at forty one mm. to wow. fifty. Wow. Uh, although I frankly think, uh, for the record, I think that forty one to fifty was a shill bid. I don't believe mm. that was yeah. a real bid. There you um, go. Seller should have taken that if that was a real bid. Yeah. Um, but I also think it speaks to the fact that, you know, BAT is the preeminent platform currently. I mean, that could change. Yeah. Uh, I view P car is kind of definitely a third rate auction site. And so Ooh. when a vehicle moves from BAT to P car, I don't think it bodes well. Nope. Um, I think the seller is not realistic. I think the bidding on this thing is going to dry up at 33 to 50. There and it's go. going to go to the and the bid goes on. Yep. It'll yeah. it'll do a deal take here. Yeah. Yep. I mean, this exactly. is such a weird yeah. thing for P car. Uh, Nathan, have you been watching prices lately? P car market has been bringing some pretty big numbers on some cars that I wouldn't have thought would have brought big numbers. And I'm with you. BAT is the is the is the juggernaut. They're the guys to beat. I think cars and bids is uh, is, is floundering, uh, and P car is kind of on its way up. Uh, but yeah, have you watched Porsche prices lately on P car? Like yeah, the they've done pretty well on a, yeah. on a couple cars. Did you um, see that M491 in Granite Green the other day bring 125000 bucks? Did you catch that? Yeah, I know that yeah. car very well. Hmm. Oh, you do? Okay. Do yeah. you think that car would have brought more on BAT? Um. Because, I mean, this is part of the game, right? This is why we do this is because it's not just the yeah. cars. It's always about the platform, platform, right? Platform, platform, platform. <laughs> the right car in the right place with the right audience brings the money. I think that's why Cars and Bids is floundering because it's attracted this audience of maybe younger people and younger enthusiast cars are really hard to buy, like I said earlier, uh, you know, because the people that want them and can afford them can't afford them in cash. They have to get uh, they have to go get loans. So it's really hard to buy uh, an enthusiast Audi or, or Volkswagen uh, or BMW you uh the classic cars uh the this radwood era stuff uh is stuff that guys our age want and we have uh, guys our age have disposable income whereas young people don't so uh it's it's easy for people in our kind of range to be to to take advantage uh and see oh there's the car i've always wanted that was what was on my wall or i always wanted one one of these because uh the girlfriend that uh, i wanted didn't like me because i didn't have that car well i can have it now right okay great um <laughs> You know, so the audience for something like this, is this on P car? The person that wants this truck? I think it's the wrong venue. Uh, that's, that's my take on it. Yeah. Uh, I think hey, it's gonna, it's hang gonna on one second. There. JP, you kind of talked in a big, huge circle. I and did. You, you, you finished with a different question. JP's mm -hmm. original question was that Granite Green M491 brought $125,000 on P car market. And JP was asking you, Nathan, if you thought that if that car was on Bring It's Trailer, if it would have brought more money than that. And I'm curious to know the answer to that question. Yeah. So uh, the best way I can answer this is I probably know this car too well. So I'm going to pretend I'm an attorney and take attorney client privilege oh! on that specific car. <laughs> oh my. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pull that on you. Okay. All right. All right. So JP, then you got to tell us what you think the Bronco is going to bring. Uh, I oh, said I haven't 30. put a number. Uh, you said Nathan 30. Said, Nathan said 33, 250. I said 30. Where are you at? Yeah. I mean, that was interesting info that uh, Nathan pulled up for us that it uh, failed to sell at 41. So uh, this thing's Should DOA. Take... There's no way it's yeah. going to 41. Uh, is it even going to break 30? I'll say, yeah, I'll say 31 uh, okay. be because people probably know that. And then eh, fine, let's bid high. And I don't know, whatever I should be bidding under, but yeah, we'll say 31. All right, there you go. Cool. I'm getting my butt handed to me this week. Deeb's doing really well. He's been. I think. I think he's cheating. I think he's doing research like Nathan, and I'm just winging it like I always do. What a good time, Nathan. Did you have a good time hanging out on the nerds? Are you Are, are you going to come back? Oh, I, I had a great time. This is this is the stuff I do with a bunch of my buddies via text anyway. So it's exactly. basically just like my day. Uh, <laughs> we 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 send cars back and forth, and we banter and talk smack. And, Particularly Cabriolet guys. Yeah, you know, they're the worst. You, get, you, get, you don't really want to have one of those in the group. It messes the whole oh, thing up. It's yeah. like someone Especially who's into... Uh, my, 
my Cabriolet guys, they have, they're really slow to text back because of between their tanning appointments and stuff. It's hard <laughs> to get that, that texting in. Why yeah. would we need so, to go tanning appointments? We have cabs. We just put the yeah, roof yeah. down. What are you talking we, about? We no, you, you, you don't want those tan lines. We, we're out <laughs> driving our cars, man. We're actually enjoying our automobiles, unlike the uh, the, the fancy coupe guys who have their diapers. Are, oh, I'm saving yeah. this car for the next guy. All right. Yeah. yeah they're... <laughs> Structurally more rigid, JP. We can hold more cornering speed, but you yeah. understand. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't care uh, because I'll be having more fun. Uh, all right. With all the supermodels that like... Like the chicks dig <laughs> convertibles. Yes. I, I'm with Sir mix He said there's nothing better than a convertible turbo 911 with your girl <laughs> next to you and her hair flying. Uh, oh there it my is. Gosh. Uh, you know, baby got back. All right. Anyways, uh, Nathan, thanks for hanging out and busting our chops and uh, having a good time and talking about cars other than Porsches. That was fun to get your take on things that weren't just P cars. Um, so we're definitely going to have to get you back on. I think it's amazing, JP, how even with Nathan on here, who was mm-hmm. very excited to not have to just talk about Porsches all day, almost every car we covered, uh, we compared it to a Porsche one way or another. <laughs> but we did get him to stop talking about a Porsche. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we found one that's that he won't, true. that he zipped his lip. I am not. Ta- we yeah. actually got Nathan to not talk about a Porsche. So that's the takeaway. Oh Thanks everyone for hanging out uh, and being, uh, you know, just being a nerd. You found your people. This is Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Biz. Bring a trailer, rad for sale, and all the popular automotive enthusiast auction sites. Uh, Nathan Murs from Columbia Valley. Uh, how do I say it again? That's too many words. Columbia Valley. Luxury, luxury cars. cars, luxury cars, oh, not just boy. B cars. There it is. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, Michael Deeb, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see all of yeah. you guys tomorrow on Bid Nerds, nine o'clock hour every day. Anything you want to, you guys want to say before I click it out? Nathan, thank you so much for being on the show. It was very nice to meet you. Thanks for having you on, man. It was great. Nathan, any, anytime guys, any last plug, Nathan? No, I just uh, appreciate you guys having this format. And again, like I said, this is just so many of us car people. We like to do exactly just this. Um, So to get to be able to talk cars. And for me, it's fun to talk non-Porsche because I swear people think I only like Porsche. (laughs) And I said, oh, man, I like I like weird and bizarre stuff. So give me weird and bizarre fun any day. 5-0 notchback (laughs) in his future recommended by Vu. Isn't that hilarious? Yes, I love it. That's really funny. JP, you hear that? Everybody likes this show. Maybe we should do another one tomorrow. Maybe you guys should help spread the word. Hit subscribe, hit like, uh, you know, notifications, and let somebody know that the show exists. Find all our nerds. Let's get together, guys. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Get those nerds, nerds! Thank you, Nathan. Take care, man. Have a good day.